Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. We're going to start out with the gold chart, but the, the main emphasis is going to be Bitcoin. But uh, I'm going to have to bounce back and forth here into my Coinbase account just because the timeout function is so bad that uh, I have to keep this wallet alive. But we'll start out with the gold chart, and you can see here I've drawn a couple of trend lines in here. Of course, the primary trend line that goes back to the beginning of the bull market, back in really 2002, you can see this was going to be the test line. If we got through 1,000, we would test 900 was my assumption. Now you can see kind of a bounce starting here. And the big question is going to be at 1150, will this bounce in gold hold? Will it be uh, a rally point? Now it does line up with this secondary trend line here. It, it's not perfect. You can see it really only has one touch point. We can draw the other trend line in that lines up with this one and you can see that one was broken. Uh, but this one seems to be holding and the other important thing you want to note here is the MACD. Now you can see on the MACD I've drawn a level line here based on the 2008 low let me refresh my um, Coinbase so I don't get kicked out here. But you can see on the low that I drew from 2008 on the MACD, we really only had one other violation of that low, which was this huge downtrend from the 2011 top of 1900 in gold which brought the MACD all the way down to this phenomenal negative 100 reading. It rallied from there as the market fell and uh, then finally got a little bit of a rally here with this sort of bottom at the beginning of 2016. Now you can see here we're starting to rally kind of in anticipation of another new year, maybe a new year rally. And you can see here the MACD is actually at the testing the second lowest. So it's currently the third lowest, but it could violate the 2008 low and give us the second lowest ever on this MACD. That could be very bullish if we turn up from here because we're going to get a confirmation of this secondary trend line and uh, confirmation of the 2008 low on the MACD. So very bullish if it turns from here in gold. Now I want to go to the Chinese Yuan because that's a really important story that we're going to look here on Zero Hedge in regards to Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is such a huge story there's no way to overemphasize the importance of Bitcoin. As I pointed out before, the move in the Chinese Yuan, this is a rally of US dollar in Chinese Yuan, so that means the Chinese Yuan is weakening. But you can see here it went beyond this point, which for me was a point that I thought it would not penetrate. I thought that the uh, Chinese currency would weaken and then turn back, uh, and it, it hasn't. And this is going to lead into our zero hedge story. So before we do that, I want to look at the Bitcoin chart because Bitcoin seems to be making a really big move right now. And it's challenging that old high. Now, you have to remember there are a lot of exchanges and you, you can't rely on one exchange. You can see here on the Chinese exchange, we're up at 1,069. Uh, Bitfinex is at 1,025 and you can see the Russian exchange is still under 1,000 with Bitstamp at 1,020. Now I've drawn in a couple of lines here. You can see clear pennant formations here. This rising flag with a breakout. Another rising flag with a breakout. And now we've got this dramatic uh, formation here. Challenging the old highs. In Chinese Yuan, we're up at 8,000. That's really only 500 yuan away from all-time record highs. Uh, on Bitstamp, we're talking about, you can see how close it is, 1163, 1020. 
that's still another $140, $150 off from all-time highs. But the strength is amazing. Now you can see, looking at the relative volume here, on Bitstamp, nothing is uh, here for Bitstamp. If we look at Bitfinex, you can see virtually nothing on Bitfinex. But if we go over to the Chinese chart, you can see here's the volume. So let's look at the Zero Hedge article about Bitcoin. Uh, I want to take you over to my wallet to show you what I've done here, but uh, I have to just keep refreshing this. Uh, so let me cover this just in case I get kicked out here. So you can see here on my Coinbase wallet, these were the first purchases I did. I went back to um, my first purchases. Now, I did not do my first purchases in Bitcoin on Coinbase. Coinbase, Coinbase was actually kind of a latecomer as far as Bitcoin was concerned. And I think my first transactions were in 2013. But you can see here, I bought five Bitcoins for $240. I bought 10 Bitcoins for $741. And I bought 10 Bitcoins for $756. So um, about a, what is that uh, come to? $60, $50 Bitcoin price there, $70 Bitcoin price there. And you can see I, I got 25 Bitcoins for about 1500 bucks. So we've had a significant appreciation here. Now, hopefully if I don't get kicked out, uh, I'm going to be able to show you the sending and receiving because we have a lot of people concerned about their Coinbase Bitcoins. And I want to show you how to do that. If I can't get to it tonight, I'm going to get to it tomorrow night. Uh, I've got a Bitcoin wallet here, Bitcoin Core, but you can see the blockchain is so large that it, it takes a very long time to get the entire blockchain. It starts out at six years, but uh, you can see we're at 39 weeks. And as we get closer and closer to today, the blockchain gets much larger because there are so many more transactions. So you'll see the years go by at first, but then when we start to get into the current year, and this is, I'm on a big connection right now. I'm on a, a, a 50 by 50 or something, a, a really fast connection, but still it's a very, very large file to get the entire blockchain. Now I recommend that you get the entire blockchain if you're going to get the Bitcoin core client and we'll get back to that here. So let's get to this Zero Hedge article on Bitcoin and this is uh, the latest from Zero Hedge. You can see January 2nd at uh, 8.13 p.m. Yuan dumps Bitcoin jumps as China researchers suggest a one-off devaluation and capital controls. Now we were actually the first to talk about capital controls. Back in 2011 when I first got into Bitcoin when it was around 5, 10, 3, I don't even remember, um, we did a video about Bitcoin and borders talking about how cryptocurrencies defeat capital controls. So capital controls really with cryptocurrencies become a vestige of the past. Um, and I've done videos on my Bitcoin channel talking about how gold and Bitcoin can be combined actually to move gold across borders as well. But we're not seeing the type of moves in gold that we're seeing in Bitcoin and that makes sense. For the most part, you have to carry it from one place to another. As I did in that video, I explained how you can take your gold, sell it for Bitcoin in the country you're in, move the Bitcoin overseas, buy gold again with the Bitcoin that you have. The problem with that is that if enough people do that, you get a very large discrepancy arbitrage problem with the physical gold and the Bitcoin based on those borders. So it, it does give you the ability to move currency across borders specifically being Bitcoin and to a certain extent precious metals across borders but if everyone's doing it at the same time you're going to see a very very large imbalance and you're going to have to pay a, an exorbitant price to reacquire those precious metals. Now that's a lot better 
than what we saw with the Jews trying to get out of Nazi Germany where they had to actually put the gold in their teeth and uh, try to get across the border without having all of their wealth stolen. We know all those stories. So it's much, much better now. But th that's why we're seeing these types of crackdowns from the governments because they don't want people to be able to do these things. So let's read this story here. As we've detailed numerous times recently, the recent move in Bitcoin has been strongly suggesting increasing fears of capital controls and or expectations of a looming and quite notable devaluation of the yuan against the U.S. dollar. Tonight saw China's largest nationalist tabloid suggesting that China should consider one-off yuan devaluation to keep the currency stable at equilibrium level. Offshore yuan is tumbling to, a new, to new record lows. As we noted earlier, a quick look at the uncanny correlation between the decline in yuan and the rise in the Bitcoin price confirms that the digital currency has indeed been largely used to evade capital controls. And you can see here on the chart what he's talking about is the spike in Bitcoin and then the following uh, US dollar Chinese yuan um, currency pair move. And uh, this current spike is indicating something big is on the horizon. Based on this chart alone, the recent surge in Bitcoin would imply that a substantial devaluation of the yuan is looming that or even more aggressive capital controls. And tonight, researchers with State Information Center led by Zhu Baoling wrote an article published in the Shanghai Security News that China should consider one-off yuan devaluation to keep the currency stable at equilibrium level and suggest capital controls as well as what seems like a reference to the virtual currency. Quote, the effect of monetary policy continues to weaken after repeatedly cut interest rates lowering after the registration, this is translated from Chinese, our short futures money market interest rates have dropped to about 2.2% in the history of a relatively low level money supply growth. I'm not going to read this whole thing. It is suggested that the total social financing and broad money growth should be about 12% and uh, it goes on. So uh, a couple of things here. One was that they're talking about possible regulations of Bitcoin. Now that's going to be virtually impossible. Um, one of the comments on that was saying how uh, the Chinese government could regulate the exchanges. Well, it's true that they could regulate the exchanges in China as far as people's ability to buy and sell Bitcoin in Chinese Yuan. But uh, as far as people's ability to send Bitcoin overseas, that's absolutely ridiculous. And I want to show you here, we're still on about 38 weeks here on the Bitcoin core. But uh, let me show you the way that you get that because a lot of people are worried about their coins on Coinbase. So I want to cover that real quick so that people who are worried about that can get those coins off of there. So if you go to Google and just type in Bitcoin, the first link you're going to get is the Bitcoin.org link with uh, the wallets and everything else and just the introduction. So what you want to do is you want to just click on this link, get started with Bitcoin, and you want to click on choose your wallet. And what you want to do is get Bitcoin Core. So you click on Bitcoin Core and actually let's see you're going to want to choose windows desktop that's for me if you have a mac you choose mac and then bitcoin core and if you choose install what it's going to do it's going to grab the bitcoin core file you're going to start downloading it and it's called bitcoin whatever zero 0.13.1 uh, Windows 64 setup. You're going to save that file and once you save that file you're going to launch that file. Now I recommend if you have a partition drive that when you start installing this file that you put it on if you have uh, like I have a uh, 
uh, memory drive that doesn't have a lot of space that you put it on a partition that has a lot of space just because the the Bitcoin um, blockchain is now a lot of gigs of space so I don't recommend you put that on your fast drive put it on your slow drive but uh, you can do that and once you download that you're gonna launch the file and it's gonna launch this Bitcoin client now it's going to start up and it's going to start trying to download the blockchain. Now there are a number of ways of getting around uh, spending all of this time downloading the blockchain and it, for me it's not worth it. If you have a decent connection just let it run for a couple days and it'll, it'll get the entire blockchain. But uh, let it run and then once it's done and I can't show you now because it's obviously 38 weeks behind but uh, once it's done and all caught up with the blockchain then when you want to you can see obviously it's a zero balance but if you wanted to receive your bitcoins into this wallet you would just go to receive and then request payment and then what it does when you click on request payment it generates a Bitcoin address this is just a cryptographic uh, hexadecimal numerical code you can see how long it is uh, control C copy it uh, and let's say that you have your coins over in coinbase uh, you're logged in and that's a giant nightmare to deal with now but uh, you just click on send request and then you just paste in the address for the recipient and you can see that address you just type in the amount of bitcoins obviously I have virtually nothing in my wallet and then you click on send funds it's gonna have all kinds of two-factor authentication and email verification and all kinds of crazy stuff you're gonna to have to do to get that to send but basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna send those bitcoins from your uh, coinbase account to this wallet now you can have any number of these this is just a copy of the Bitcoin core uh, you can have one on every computer that you have you can have multiples on every computer that you have it, that becomes very confusing I don't recommend it but you can if you want to so what this core client does is it stores a wallet and the way that it's a dot dat file and it just stores it on your computer you can choose this option backup wallet and you can see there this is the name of the file wallet dot dat and you can choose wherever you want to save this uh, you can save it anywhere you want on your computer and this is going to be a copy of your encrypted keys so this is the file that you want this is the file that has the value of all your bitcoins uh, you can test this file and I recommend that you do so this is one thing that I've done I recommend that if you're going to test how to back up your bitcoins that you send some bitcoins to this address so uh, as I showed you before you just send a token amount of bitcoins say 0.01 bitcoins to this wallet now it's going to take some time for the blockchain to process the transaction that's one of the reasons why I recommend alternative cryptocurrencies you're gonna to have to wait around for these coins to clear but once they clear you'll see that in the available number here they'll come in and then you'll have some coins uh, one another thing you can do is you can encrypt your wallet what that does is that sets an encrypted password on this wallet when you set a passphrase on encrypting this wallet you better remember that passphrase I recommend uh, you use a unique phrase that you will never forget and it's not a phrase that anybody else knows uh, a series of words or numbers combined with that you could take your social security number and combine that with a unique phrase that would be very difficult to break I think it goes up to 64 characters um, 10 or more random characters 8 or more words so it can be a very long password 
What that does is that takes your wallet and encrypts it and it makes it an unbreakable uh, unit. There, it's garbage to everyone but you, to the people who know the password. Now, you could take millions of dollars and lock it away under one of these passwords, but you better make sure that you know that password because if you lock it away and encrypt that wallet with a password and you forget that password, those bitcoins are gone. So the way you back this up, again, is you just choose Backup Wallet. It's going to create this wallet.dat file. It's a tiny file. It's your encrypted keys. You can save it anywhere. You can put it on a thumb drive. And I recommend sending a tiny amount of Bitcoins to one of these wallets. Practice backing up that wallet.dat. Take it, transfer it to another computer, download another Bitcoin core, and try to import that wallet and make sure that you have the ability to transfer those bitcoins. Hopefully that's clear enough. I'm going to cover in my next video once I get the core. I'm going to show you these things. I'm going to walk you through these steps. I know it's confusing to people who aren't really familiar with this, but it's really very, very simple. You buy your coins on Coinbase or any other online uh, site. You send them to your Bitcoin Core wallet that you can have on any computer anywhere in the world. And that gives you the ability to transact in Bitcoin, uh, send Bitcoin to anyone anywhere in the world. Now, as I've covered before on my Poloniex videos and how to hedge, I do believe there's going to be a big crash in Bitcoin. Uh, it may come after we break through into new highs. It may come before. And that might be a point where people want to buy. You can see we've had a tremendous run up. Let's put it on to the Bitfinex chart, which is in dollars. You can see it's been a pretty much straight up run from we got to 750. I actually did some hedging at 750 and did some backing and filling with some other alts. But pretty much Bitcoin has has been the outperformer. Now let me show you on the uh, crypto coin index here. You can see back when I started covering it, uh, the alt currency totals with Bitcoin were around nine billion. You can see we've almost tripled now to thirty billion dollars. Still a mere pittance when we're talking about the value of all of the gold and all of the currencies and all of the debt and all of the pensions and all of the money that everyone owes to everyone else. It's a pittance at all, not even $30 billion, but still it's growing. And Bitcoin is not the only one that's growing. You can see that Litecoin is growing. Now, a lot of people have asked me about Litecoin. I have some Litecoin as well. But Litecoin, for the longest time, was the silver to Bitcoin's gold. Uh, Litecoin has, is having a decent reaction, but you can see on the long-term chart, the Litecoin really has never uh, kept up with Bitcoin. This is Litecoin in US dollars. If you want to do a relative comparison, you can go to uh, either BTC China or BTCE. They both have Litecoin Bitcoin charts. And you can see on the long-term, Litecoin has tremendously underperformed Bitcoin. So at this point, is Litecoin the silver to Bitcoin's gold? No, not really. Probably one of these others. If we take one of the other coins here and just rank them by market cap, you can see Bitcoin is number one. I don't know what this WEX coin is. This is probably fake. But you can see Ethereum next, Monero. You can see a big surge in Monero. It's up at a quarter of a billion dollars now. That's a, a true crypto. And Litecoin's still holding strong at almost a quarter of a billion. Here's Ripple. I didn't think it would stay in there, but it has. There's the fork of Ethereum, Ethereum Classic. So you've got both Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. That fork issue is coming up with Bitcoin. So not a big issue because you can see all these other cryptocurrencies that uh, money could flow into. So the cryptocurrency space is growing. Uh, we've already covered how 
Cryptocurrencies give you the ability to defeat capital controls. That's the reason why they're growing. And it's clear that China is leading the way. I've shown you from the volume off of the Huobi index that it uh, completely uh, overshadows all the other indices. The Chinese are trying to get their money out of the country and the government is rapidly cracking down on that. I think the dollar transaction now for the Chinese is around $7,000 reportable, which is actually lower than the $10,000 reportable that we have in the U.S., although there's the uh, chaining transactions uh, regulation. So uh, I'm going to try to cover tomorrow, uh, show you an actual transfer and an actual backup, but Bitcoin's on the move. Watch it very closely. We're watching that breakout. It's going to be a breakout of 1200 is going to take us into new highs for Bitcoin and who knows what uh, it's going to go to after that could be 5000 very very fast and we'll talk to you next time